So, gentlemen, so what I'm going to do now is to demonstrate how to model a small water skin as you have in your screen on Epanet. This is part of the tutorial that comes with the Epanet software um, from the United States U.S. Um, Environmental Protection Agency, the Epanet software, which has been used all over the world for modeling and um, simulation of water distribution system. So in this tutorial, we're going to analyze a small network. Uh, let me just explain to you what the network is so that you can, uh, you can understand it further. This is a source, a water source. Um, this is a water source. Uh, this is a pump. This is your tank. And these are your nodes. So it means surrounding these nodes are houses or residential areas. So these nodes are placed based on the designer's concept, the designer's um, modeling approach. It is not cast on stone. But one thing I know is that the, your modeling should, your distribution network should follow the road pattern because the pipes are going to be laid on the right of way. So you are not going to be start laying pipes inside the bush or inside in abstract places because then you might not be able to um, locate them. But if you just look beside the road, you know, okay, there's a pipe here. So if I'm doing any work there, I should be careful. Now, it's a step-by-step -step approach. The tutorial is a step-by-step -step approach. Um, the first thing we're going to do, so I'm going to follow it the way it is. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my Epanet software. Um, this is my Epanet software. Um, this is a new Epanet software. Um, this is my map mm. area, network area. This is my browser where I'm going to mm. put my values. This is my two bars. Mm. This is my menu bars. This is my standard menu bars. Mm. Then under here is my tax bar and then the location of my cursor and the location of my mouse. Okay. Mm. So, um, I don't want to make sure. Okay. So, back again. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is to, um, open the Epanet app, just open the Epanet. So he said the first task is to create a new project in Epanet and make sure that certain yeah. defaults are selected. He said if Epanet is not already running, then launch it from the browser and then you continue. So Epanet is already yeah. launched. So he says select file so this is file it says select new mm. i've selected new it says go to projects go to defaults mm. the project default is opened then on the id levels um i'll clear all the prefix so i'll clear all my old prefix i'll clear all of them these are just like annotations okay yeah. Good. So um please, you please. say on Hello. the increments Hello. on the ID Hello. increments. Hello, sorry. I can hear you, sir. Hello, sir. I can hear you. Please can you don't be angry. Uh please can we just go back again? I am on the new Epanet now. I don't want it to Okay, go, to, go to file. File, yeah. If you miss anything, don't don't worry. If any, any if you miss anywhere, and I, I don't expect you to to follow me. But if you miss somewhere. Yeah. Just know that it's yes. been recorded. Good. Go to file. Okay. Okay. And choose new. Yeah. Then go yeah. to project. Select default. Yeah. And then clear all yeah. what you have here. Your own will be vacant, okay. vacant because I'll be using the panel. So these are my own choice yeah. of annotation. This is how I want, yeah, I want to annotate yeah. and detail my my own pipes and notes. Okay. Then in under increments, okay. just put one. Okay. Okay. Then go to the yeah. next tab, which is hydraulics. Yes, and hydraulics. Yeah. Leave it as Hazen William head loss formula. There are many head loss formula okay. here. Okay. This is Dasi Yeah. This is Jesse Manning. But we'll leave yeah. it as Jesse William because yeah. this tutorial will be done in American units. Okay. It will be done in American units. So Hazen next William one, go to flow. Uh, go to flow units. As, as a William is H, it's HW. Okay. HW, sir, yes. Go to flow units. I can't see it here. Okay, we have flow. Okay. 
All right. You can move the bar up and down. So go yes, to I've seen this it, place, I've seen it. the flow units. Leave it as yeah. gallon per minute. There is liter per minute, second. Right, yeah. There's liter per minute. Yeah, I understand. There's yeah. milliliter mm. per day, and so on and so forth. But leave it as yeah. GPM, flow units, and then choose as in William. That's how the two okay. things. All right. Uh -huh. If you want, you can change other yeah. things, but don't change another thing here. Accuracy, you can change accuracy to 0 0.1. Okay. One. Okay. To one decimal place. Okay. Specific yeah. gravity of water is one. So leave it. As you mean, you are modeling for gas yeah. or any other thing that, that yes. viscosity and yes. viscosity are different. You now you change them here. Yeah. But for now, just leave it the way it is because you're modeling water. Uh, gravity of water is one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now you click yeah. okay. If you want this thing to be reoccurrent, you click on save us. So that anytime you want to do something, it will save on the same okay. format. But okay. now let me just say yeah. save as default. Okay. Yeah. Then next we go to map setting. This is your map area here. This is your map area. So we want to set our map setting so that okay. our IDs and everything will be so conspicuous and obvious. So number one, you select view. Yes. View. View. You go to okay. options. Options. Okay. Under options, you select nodes. Increase the node size to five so I can see it very well. It can be big enough. Oh, okay. Okay. Go to links. Change it to two, so you can see it very well. You can change it to three or anything. Go to labels. Links. Leave it the way it is. Two. Go to annotation. Okay. Check the first three. In other words, you want it to display the link ID, the node ID, the link, so that you'll be seeing it. Okay. Okay. Go to symbol. Leave the way. Leave it the way it is. Go to flow arrows. Okay. You can change it to fill. Arrow size. You can increase it to say ten. So you can see it. Okay. okay. Background, leave the background to be white. So you can go through here okay. and check all the things we did. And then you click OK. Yeah. Remember how I got here again? View. Yes. Options. View. view got options. There. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The videos will be there for you to see. Now, now we are going to draw our network. Now remember how the network looked like. Go to your page one. Yeah. Um, the network is this. So this is what we're going to yeah. draw now. This is the network. So yeah. all the things I'm going to do now is to draw, replicate this. So I'm going to draw yeah. this exactly the way it is. So yes. in drawing it now, the first thing I do is my reservoir. This is my reservoir. I'll click on the reservoir yes. and I'll drop yes. it somewhere here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The next thing is I'll pick my node, junction. I'll drop it here. Yes. Don't worry yes. about the not available. This not NA that you are seeing. If you don't want to see it, you simply yes. go to back to view option. Go to notation. You, you yeah. Okay. The last one. Remove the fourth one. Okay. Mm. Good. I'll come here again. I'll drop number three. Okay, still showing. Yes. We're still showing um, node value. I'll move it. It's not showing again. That's number three. Yeah. Then number four is under here. Is number four. Number five yes. is here. Yes. Number six is here. Yes. Number seven is here. Number eight is not a node. Number eight is a tank. So I'll go and drop it and pick up a tank and drop yeah. it here as no, node number eight. So I've finished drawing my nodes. I will now drop it again. Go and click the black arrow. Let's click the black arrow. I will now go and click, click, click on my pipeline. Between one and two mm. is the pump. So don't start there. Yeah. Start from two to three. Yeah. Yes. And that'll be my pipe one. Then three to seven is my pipe two. Three to four is my pipe three. Four to six is my pipe four. Huh. Six to seven is my pipe eight, pipe five. Then seven to the tank is my pipe six. My pipe seven is from node four to node five. Then from node five 
to node 8. Then I'll go and pick pump. Remember, for reasons you don't know, they, are, they put pump here. The, the reason you find out later, because the elevation of 0.1 and 0.2 are almost the same on the same point. So they needed a pressure to push it water. But just since you're just drawing schematic, yeah. I'll drop it, pick up the pump. In drawing the pump, I'll click on reservoir and then click on node 2. The pump will appear. So this is the network. Mm -hmm. I'll go and click on this black one. Just hold on. Don't worry yourself. If you make a mistake, okay. just follow me. The video is available. So now, you, if you look at this place, this place is not straight for me. I'll go and pick Vertex. I showed us how to pick Vertex. I'll pick on Vertex. I'll come yeah. here and click on this. I'll right click and say Add Vertex. Yeah. You will not see anything. Yes. Click again, Add Vertex. It, it has added one node. I'll click again. Mm. I'll say Add Vertex. I added three. I'll click again. Mm. It added four. This four is enough for me. I will now click on this mm. vertex. It, one of them will turn to black. I will press and hold it down yes. and move it. Yes. I will press this one again. It will turn to black. I will press again and hold it yes. down and move it. I will press this again. Yes. Turn black. I will hold it down and move it. You know, I, want, I just want to get that coverage mm. Maybe that's a road. That's a curve road yes. or something. Yes. That could be a curve road, but just this is how, just to make it curvy. Uh, make it more helic helical mm. also. Good. I'll go and click this black arrow, which is select. Because if you click again, it will keep repeating the same action. Mm. So now, I am on page three. So I'll go down. I have done all this. I am on page three, so this is where I am. I've done this, I've drawn the network. This is drawing the network. You follow this, yeah. you just follow this through. So this is where I say repeat yes. all this. I've done that. So this is where we are yes. now. Finally draw the pump, I've drawn the pump. So you say final tax. Hmm. So the final tax now is to add the labels. Is to add labels. So in adding this, mm. select this. Okay, this is where we are now, page three. Good. This is label. I'll click on this T. Yeah. I'll go somewhere to the reservoir. I'll click here. Mm. Mm. A box will appear and I'll type reservoir. Mm. Okay. I'll press enter. I'll go down here at the pump. I'll click on label again. Click somewhere at the pump here. And I'll type pump. Mm. Enter. OK. Mm. I can also yeah. go here and say tank. Enter. OK. So I'm on yes. number three. So you can see. So the next thing I'm going to do, set the properties now. So I'm going to be adding objects. Now, mm. to add objects, I'll click on this black arrow, very important. Um, if you look at page four, page four, we're on page four. On page four, mm. you see some values that have been computed for you. This is what we did yesterday, gentlemen. There's a node value. Yeah. There's the elevation yes. at that point, and there's the demand yes. at that point. Mm. So I told us these are yes. the two. These are the two for the node. I told us that two, two yeah. four parameters, two for the node, two for the yes. pipes. Yeah. So these are the two for the yes. nodes. So I'm going to impute this now yes. into my model. So that is yes. the next thing to do. So in my model, no, this is my node one. Node one is the reservoir. Yes. I will double click on it. A property box will open. Yes. Under elevation. Yes. Total head, I'll put 700. Based on what, I'll press enter. I'll close it. Mm. I'll go to node two. Mm. I'll see elevation. I'll put 700. Mm. Under demand, I'll put zero. I'll press enter. Yes. Based on what is on the chart. Yes. I'll go to number three. 
elevation 710. Mm. The demand is 150. Mm. Enter. Mm. I'll go to node 4. If I just click on node 4, listen, watch this, watch here. This is junction ID3, isn't it? Eh? Mm. And it's blinking. How to yes. know? This is number three. And here it's blinking. Yes. If you go to your browser, this is your browser window. This small window yes. is called your browser window. It's also highlighted. Now, watch me as I go to node four and see what will happen. If I now go and click on node four, this value have I've changed to node yes. four. And the browser have changed to node four. Yeah. So I don't even need to close this to go and click. Yes. Just click on that one. The property will update. Under elevation, I'll put 700. Mm. And under okay. base demand, I'll put 150. I'll press okay. enter. I'll go to number five. Elevation at number five is 650. Okay. The base okay. demand is 200. Yeah. Enter. Number six. Elevation, 700. Base mm. demand, 150. Enter. Yeah. Number seven. You see, it's here. Mm. Show me number seven here. Here. Yes. Elevation, 700. The base demand, zero. I'll go to number eight, which is bank. I'll click on it. Elevation, 8,000. Now, some of you will know or uh, will observe why there is a pump. You cannot pump from, uh, from elevation of 700 to elevation of 830 without needing a pump. Mm. A pump whose mm. head must not be less than 130. Because if you had 130 to 700, yes. you get 830. Take note, please. Mm. So here is a tank. That's why you're not seeing demand. Rather, you're seeing the tank mm. configuration. The diameter of the tank, so it's now left for you to design your tank the way you want it. But for now, um, if you go down the last paragraph, mm. you see for the reservoir, node one, we enter 700 mm. in the field. For the tank, we enter 830 for the elevation. We enter four for the initial level. In other words, this is where the water cannot be, go below. Then for the mm. maximum level, we put 20. And then for the diameter, we change it to 60. This is just left for you. You know, you know the type of tank you want to design, which is a function mm. of the demand in your system. Mm. So we are still on page four. We have imputed the node property. Now the next thing we're going to do is to impute the link property. So mm. these are the node property. So if you go down, mm. you now go to the link property. So this is the, this is the remaining two. I told us that you need four. Two for the node, yes. two for the pipe. So once you don't get those four, yeah. you model any water distribution system. Mm. Your problem as an engineer yeah. is how yeah. do you derive, how do you get those four parameters? So whatever method yeah. you're going to use to get those four parameters, which must be that you must get your demand first. From your demand, you use our chart yes. you used yesterday and get your pipe size, or use any other chart in yes. the market. There's many. Yes. There's the Vajvar chart. There's Manning chart. There's yeah. uh, Kolobruk chart. Yeah. There's um, Euler's yeah. chart. There is um Reynolds charts, mm. just whatever charts you can lay your hands mm. on. So we are going to include these values now. Mm. So um for pipe one, double click on pipe one. If you look here, you see pipe pipe ID yeah. one. Eh? On your browser, Amen. you see yeah. that turn to pipe. Start node yes. is two, end node is three. Yes. The length is one thousand. Yes. But here they ask yes. us to change the length to what three thousand. Mm. So, and the diameter to 14 inches because this thing is in inches yes. the length is in feet because yes. we are dealing on American units yes. which is here yes. gallons per minute enter yes. then mm. pipe 2 mm. double click on pipe 2 is 5000 mm. the length thank you yeah the diameter is 12 I'll leave it at 12 I'll press enter okay Mm. Are you with me? Yes. Then I'll go to pipe, pipe three. four. Three. Oh, pipe three. Four. Oh, pipe three. Yeah, pipe three. Sorry. Pipe three. Pipe three is five thousand. 
Now, why am I putting 5,000? Because overtime length is off. It's not automatically taking the length. So we're putting the length ourselves. Okay. The length is 8. 5, 4. Okay. 5,000 again. Mm. Eight. The is 8. 5, 6. 7,000. 7,000. And the diameter is 10. 10 inches. 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. 5, 7. 5, 7. 5, 7. Okay. 5,000. And the diameter is 6. You, you can you can imagine because that's almost the lowest yeah. point too. Then mm. pipe you don't even have pipe eight. Okay, pipe eight. Pipe eight is seven thousand. And the pipe size is six. The next thing you do now, you have inputted all the parameters for the node and the parameters for the for the pipes. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to design my pump. That's another use of Epanet. Epanet can help you design your pump. I can't see Let pipe. Eight. You say pipe eight. Pipe eight is hello. Sorry. Seven thousand. The diameter is six inches. I, I can't see. I can't see pipe eight. I'm seeing pipe five instead. Yeah. There's pipe. Don't worry. Just follow up. Just follow. There's pipe five. There's pipe eight, sir. Okay. The one you cover it If you use, if, if it's another number, it's just click on it and put it. Okay. In. Okay. Cover Oh. You mustn't be okay, following is, these pipe okay. sizes. You mustn't follow these pipes, this, this yes. uh, annotation. You can follow the annotation. Annotation, okay. Uh -huh. You know, I okay. can come in and say okay, that this pipe is uh, to VI. Just to help my contract to understand. Did you see that? Okay. Yes, I understand. Uh -huh. I can just put okay, it okay. Uh -huh. So now, So, so now I will, I'm going to design pump. Before I design pump, let me just tell us something. The lowest elevation is at the reservoir, 700. The highest elevation is your elevated tank at 830. So common sense yeah. will tell you yes. that we need a pump. But what yes. kind of pump we need? Now, in pump, there are two things you do in pump. You just simply design what we call a pump curve. Once you design the pump curve, you now impute mm. the pump curve inside the pump. The pump will now use that pump curve to run. So now we're going to design a pump okay. curve. And what's a pump curve? A pump curve will show you the head versus the flow relationship. So we know the head we want to overcome. Eh? And we, when we know the flow, the maximum the flow. flow in our network. Good. So we are going yeah. to design the pump. So to design the pump, first of all, we select the pump. Double click on the pump. Mm. The pump ID is nine. Eh? Yeah. And here you see where they wrote pump curve. <coughs> eh? That's the pump thing. curve. I'll put one there, one, and press enter. Now I'm going to design a pump curve and give it one. Yeah. So that's I couldn't put this I could pump. We now use the pump curve to run. So now what okay. I'm going to do now, I've, under the pump curve, I just double click on the pump, double click on the pump, the property will come out. You, you can scroll up and down until you get to pump curve and you put one and press enter. In other words, I've given this, this pump is going to run with the pump curve of one. So I will mm. now come here. I'll open this place and go to curves. Under this call, I will put in um, add. I'll click on add. When I click on add, it will open a dialog box for me. It will open a dialog box for me. So inside this dialog box, I will now make sure that the pump curve ID is one. Because I've already put one inside the property of the pump. 
On that head, I'll put 150. On that flow, I'll put anything above 200. But for now, let me put 600. Now, what I'm telling this cup pump is that I want you to design a, a pump of 150 and a flow of 600. Now, how did I get 150? I got 150 because the tank is at 830. My tank is at 830. Okay? At 830. And my, my, my reservoir is at 700. So I need a, 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 a pump to push water from 700 to 830. So, what I will now do is I will go here and then click OK. If I click OK, if I go back to this pump now and click Edit, you see my pump curve. This is my pump curve. OK. If I want to view it again, I just go, go here. Because here it's saying curve 1, pump curve 1. So if I click this, I'll delete it. If I click this, I'll add it. But I want to edit it. I'll click on it to show me a curve I have designed. So that is how to design my comp curve. So the next thing I will now do is to save my work. I'll go to save, save as, and I will save it as um, still on desktop. I'll save it in one. I'll save it on how to design with a palette. Okay, maybe it's the network. Okay. Uh, someone cannot hear me. I think I muted some people. But there was not noise from the background. So let's continue. Reduce the volume, please. Reduce the volume. Reduce the volume for me. So now you can see that we have designed our pump. So I've, I've saved my work also. So as I've saved my work now, the, the work I've saved as how to design a panel, .NET. So I've saved my work. Now, um, the next thing that we need to do now is to run our analysis. If you run your analysis and it, it didn't say successful, it means there's a mistake somewhere. You have to go and check it and troubleshoot. So I will run, come and run my analysis. To run my analysis, um, I can come here and say run. I can also go to projects and say run analysis. So is that I click here, I'll go to project and I'll say run, run analysis. If I run analysis, it's, it's giving me error messages. But the good thing about internet is that it will give you error message. I also tell you how to solve it. So there's a problem with my pump. My pump is not working fine. So there's a problem with the pump. So I'll go and check what the problem is. So I'll click on this pump again. The pump curve is one. So I'm wondering what the pump, what the problem is. It's telling me is one. So um, elevation of pump. I'll click on the elevation of the pump. Total head is 700. Elevation of node one is 700. Elevation of the tank. I didn't put elevation for tank. So elevation of tank is 830. So this is where the problem is coming from. Are you with me? I forgot to put 830 for tank. That's why it's giving me error. So I'll go back and run it again. And this time, it is successful. So this is successful Apanet model. I'll click OK. Now, let's continue. Now, this is a single analysis I've run now. But we can also try many things now. If you want to observe your pressures and all the places they are appearing, you now go to map view. This is map view. You click on map view. If you click, if you click on this map view, you will be able to see the some of the um you can decide to view anything you want to view um if you don't want to view anything and say no view no view it will just become what you have drawn this is what you have drawn this is what it looks like but if you want to view maybe how your um head is distributed then you go here and you say i want to check my head it will tell you how your head are flowing and in the pipe i want to check the velocity so in the pipes it's giving you the velocity now i'm not seeing my legend i'll go to view 
I'll go to legend. I'll click on node legend to come out. I'll click on view. I'll click on link legend. It will come out. So this legend will guide me to see what I'm seeing. So how do you interpret this legend? If you go here now, you see that it's telling you anything less than 0 0.1. The velocity is blue. But you can see blue here. Why you are seeing this blue here is that this place is only a pump. And the internal friction in the pump is zero. There's no velocity inside the pump. That's why you are seeing this blue line. This green line now means that the velocity is between 0 0.1 and 1. The yellow lines are telling you that the velocity at that or in those sections are between 1 and 2. And now we don't have any red velocity, meaning no velocity is greater than 2. Because if the velocity is greater than 2, it will give you a red color. For the head, almost all the head are showing us red. So it means that each of those heads are above 100 feet, which is true because our head in our reservoir is 700 and the head in our tank is 830. So invariably, all the heads should be more than 100. If you want to work on this to make the heads to be different, then you need to change the legend. So to edit the legend, double click on the legend. Oh, sorry. To edit the legend, you can right click on it. If you right click on legend, it will bring you up a dialog box like this. So in this dialog box, I will say, I will change this to 500, for instance. And I will change the red one to say 750 or 800, let's say 800. Then this one, I will change it to say 670. And then this one, I will change it to say 700. Now, I'm telling you that any head that is more than 800 should be red. Any head that is more than 700, it should be red. So I'll click OK. You see, the reservoir has changed. Then some also have also changed. If I come here now and say 750 should be yellow, some of them will change. And so on and so forth. So let's continue. The next thing, we, so I can view, I can also say, okay, I don't want to view head. I want to view base demand. And in the link, I want to view the flow. It will show me the flow. So here, all the flow that are more than 100 is red. That's why you see many flow that are more than 100. The ones that are low flow will be between 25 and 50. I'm just trying to explain to us. But the good thing is that you can easily right click here and you change the legend. You can also change the color ramp. You can even click on the color ramp and give the different color ramp. It will give you, it will, it will take you a, a different color ramp. I don't think I like, I, like, I like this color ramp. Let me, let me leave it at rainbow. Seven, the seven colors in the rainbow. So this is for what we call a single, this is day one, 12 a.m. This is for a single analysis. But now we're going to run a simulated analysis. And to run a simulated analysis, we need to run a pattern. I'm on page six now. Page six. Adding a time pattern. What is a time pattern? A time pattern is that pattern that shows you the variation of water in a day. Normally in a day, we have four time patterns. Between midnight and 6 a.m. Between 6 a.m. and 12 in the afternoon. From 12 in the afternoon to 6 in the evening, and 6 in the evening to at midnight that is how water move some of us that went through some of us that do you remember during the uh, hosted days there's always scarcity of water in the morning because morning hour is the peak peak period so as a designer you should take care of the your peak periods so let's let's go to the how to design your pattern so you will go to select options you go back to data view here click on your data data view remember map view data view map view data view if you go to your data view you click on you click on the your uh, um options so this is my options these are my options and um under options in the data browser you go to edit you edit it Okay, you go to times, sorry. On that times, you edit it. Oh, sorry. No, I'm wrong. So you select option and time. 
Okay. So under here now, under um, duration, we we'll add 22. We want to do a 72 hours simulation, three day simulation. Then under the pattern time step, pattern time step, I'll change it to six, six hours. Remember, there are 24 hours in a day. 24 hours in a day. If you divide into four, it will give you six. So six, six, six segments, six sections in a day. So that is when we expect water to the peak values to change. Then after that, I'll exit to 72 and then six. The next thing now, I'll go to, instead of options, I'll go to pattern. So what I'm going to do now is to create a pattern. What I did the last time was to change my times option. The op that times option is to is my simulation time. Those two things I change. I want to run a 72 hour simulation and those 72 hour simulation will be a six hourly. Will be in six hourly. Six hourly. Not the whole day, but six, every six hours the pattern should change. So how are the patterns going to change? That's what I'm going to create now. The patterns are going to change by me going to pattern under here and then clicking add a dialog box will open. Inside time period one, I will say 0 0.5. Inside time period two, I will say 1.3. Inside time pattern three, I will say 1.0. And then inside the last one, I will say 1.2 enter. This is the typical pattern in 24 hours in a residential water design place. This first pattern shows you that people are sleeping. So nobody is going to toilets, nobody is using water for cleaning, nobody is drinking water. But as soon as it's 6 o'clock in the morning, people will jump out of the bed. Everybody wants to take their bath, they want to go to work. So the demand for water will go up above 100%. It will increase by 20, by 30%, that's why we added 1.3 here. Then by 12 o'clock, it will come down to normal because people are coming back to work, people are going to work. Then in the evening time, when it's time to, for cooking, um, time for kitchen activities, the water demand usually goes up again by as much as 20% above threshold. So this is what time pattern means. So Ethernet is also good to help you, uh, you know, design a time model time patterns. I'll click OK. So I've designed a time pattern and I've shown how it is. So um, that is what it is. So the next thing we now do is we're going to run this system now. We're going to run this system now. But before we run this system, before you run your system on my planet, always go to options, then go to hydraulics and then go to edit and make sure that all the parameters here are in the right sense. Making sure that the default pattern is one. Because I've changed the time, I've changed the pattern. Remember the default pattern is one because you can create many patterns. So the default pattern here is one, okay? Because if you remember when we created the patterns, the default ID was one. So there is a need for us to also go back and make sure that the default ID under this running simulation is also one. Remember, we've already edited this before. Okay. And also make sure that the multiplier is one. So we'll now run this simulation again. Successful, the running was successful. The running is quite successful. Now, I'll click OK. I'll now go to map, map. If you go to map, you'll find out that something like a DVD has been added for you. If you open this time, window it will take you from one to 72 so at every hour i can know how the system is running but if i want to view the whole pattern the whole system i'll simply come here and i'll click play to start moving so this is day one watch up here day one 8 a.m 9 a.m this is the this is the situation of your water okay now it has changed it has changed yeah it has changed the flow, it has changed again. So it will tell you the flow of water in 72 hours. So this is 38, 39, 40. So it's reading, it's now 
is giving you now later i'm going to produce a report that will give you for the 72 hours it will give you a report of what is happening in your network each and every hour and these are what you can use to show to your consultant your client and your client will be so impressed he will think you have done so much so much magic he will think you have you have worked so hard but he will not know that you just got this by the click of a mouse so you can see this pattern is playing now if you want to see what you have done now um i'll just show you i'll click stop i'll go to my view i'll go to options i'll go to notation and i'll ask him to display the note id and all of them i'll click ok now i'll go back and i'll continue to run now you can see that the values are changing the values are changing and i can the, the the base demand is changing Okay, the base demand cannot change, sorry. The base demand is static. You see, the base demand is, these are the base demand. But if I now want to check and on the, on, the, on the pipe, what you are seeing on the pipe is the flow. You see the flow, 162, the flow. At some point, you see that the, the water starts flowing negatively. This is when the pump, water is flowing from the tank. You see, water is flowing from the tank and it's, it's decreasing, it's decreasing, it's decreasing. Once it gets to zero, it will start taking water from the reservoir again. That means the pump will come on. Now, I will stop it. And I will say, I want to see the demand, not the base demand now. The demand, the static, the, the instantaneous and the dynamic demand at every point. And in the links, I want to see my velocity. So these are the two parameters I want to view. Then I will go back to zero. Zero, zero hour, which is the one, 12 a.m. I will click play. Now, it is still on day two. It will turn to 3, 6 a.m. You see, the, my, my, my model has changed. Day has broken. People are, the velocity is changing. And the demand is changing this time. Can you see, at some point now, the demand here was, went to 100. And that's about, in the night, the demand went down to 100. In the daytime, 6, 8 a.m. in the morning, the demand has gone to 6, 6, 6, 200. It has gone back. You can see. So this is what Epanet does. It will help you. You can visualize your network. You'll be seeing per minute per minute. So by the time you print this thing and show to your clients and then produce the report, your client will be more than impressed. And of course, it will be worth your money. Now, I'll pause this now. I'll go to report. I'll click on report. I'll click on full report. I'll save it on my desktop. And I'll use the name, how to design uh, Epanet full report. Now, it will save it as a report file. But when you want to open it, you open it with Word file. Word file or Word, Word, Word. I'll click OK. Remember, I'm saving it on my desktop. OK. Then I'll go to my desktop now. This is it. I'll right click on it. Please. If you double click on this thing, it might not open. Or it will give you option of opening. So you have to use Word or Notepad or Wordpad. So for my own case, I have Word. I'll use Word to open it. So this is the full report. And how many pages? It's about 50 pages of reports. 50 pages of reports. And what is in the reports? This is Ethernet hydraulic simulation. You can come here and change it and edit. You can edit this. Then, but of course, I'm an engineer. I have to tell the truth. So you can see, this is the diameter of the pipes. These are the the lengths. And and these are the demand. These are the head. These are the pressures. These are the the the, the quality. So these are node value, while the other one are the link value. Link one, pipe one, pipe two, pipe three to pipe nine. These are the values. So you cannot go down. So you can see, this is page two at this hour, at this hour. Page three at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock, four o'clock, up to 72 hour which is day three this is at 23 hour 23 hour means still on day one 
So when, when you see something like 29th hour, this is day two for three days, which is 72 hours to give you that report. Now, assuming you don't want this tabular report, you, want, you just want to get some report, put it in Excel and do your work. You can also go to report and you say table report. When you click on table report, you now say, is it the node or the link? Okay, let's say I want, I want to calculate the pipe sizes. I can say the link. I will not go to columns. I would, I would describe what I want to, want, what I want to, what I want to, to be included in the report. I want the length to be in the report. I want the diameter of each pipe to be in the report. I want the velocity to be in the report. I don't want the quality. I don't want the status. I don't want the reaction rate. The ones you don't want, you remove them. You need to head loss. I want to see the report. So these are what I want to see in the report. I will now click OK. It will give me a report. Pipe one to pipe nine. These are the length of the pipes. These are the diameter of the pipes. These are the flow of the pipes. These are the velocity of the pipes. These are the unit head losses of the pipe. You might ask me, what do I do with this? Okay, I'll show you what to do with it. What you can do with this is that you can export it to Excel. You can export it to Excel and then you use AutoSum to summarize the total length of your pipe. Then based on that, you can do a quotation and give to your clients. You can also filter the diameter of each pipe and then give it to your salesperson to go to the market and tell him what to buy. That is what you can do with the pipe. So to do this, I will come and click here in between here we have link ID, which is between the columns and between the rows, the rows and the columns. If you click here, it will highlight everything inside here. I repeat it again. If you click here now, this place, it will highlight everything inside here. When you highlight everything inside here, you go to edit and you say copy to. You say copy to clipboard. You say okay. You now go to come here and you open an Excel file. Excel, I just type Excel on my search menu, on my search window, sorry. It's going to open me an Excel file. I will now paste it there. And I can start to do some computations, some mathematics, some uh, build. I can do my BEME there. Okay. So now it's opening Excel. Now Excel has opened. Excel has opened. I will come here and I will say, Control V, which is paste. So here you can see, this is pump nine. It is a pump because it's, it's not a pipe. So I'll delete it because it doesn't have diameter. So I can come here now, click here. I'll go to auto sum. Click on auto sum. It will sum up all the pipes. So we have a total of 31,700 feet of pipe. That's cool. So that's the total. Pipe. And you know that with the total pipe, pipe, you can now, you can now do a lot of things. Okay, you can do a lot of things. So at this point, I think this is up to one hour. I should um, stop this recording, and then just show us um, this. This will be a different recording. Ideally, I, I will do a different recording with this, and that will really make sense. So I will say stop recording. <laughs>